Do you have a Sony phone and want to create artificially optimized computational photography images with it? Yeah, you cannot use the standard or default software on your Sony Xperia device. You have to rely on the different part of software. And this is something that is a bit unusual as other camera softwares have this by default. But I was like a bit inspired by Superseft's podcast where he was talking about, yes, yeah, Sony has these great cameras, but they are lacking in terms, you cannot compare it with other camera systems because they don't have this heavily processed images, this artificial image um, creation. I personally don't like it so much in certain scenarios, maybe a bit with yeah, high contrast situations where HDR can kick in and brighten up the shadows a bit. But not everyone likes it. But for those who like it, he said, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Why is Sony not adding such a software to it? And he's coming up with an example of um, Filmic Pro that has some Filmic Pro options. So stuff that you can use for professional video for uh, filming. And you have this optionally, but you don't have such thing for Sony. And he's wrong because you can just install Gcam. And this is what I did here on my Xperia 1 Mark II and you can also do on your Xperia 1 Mark II, 1 Mark uh, 5 Mark II and 1 Mark III and 5 Mark III. So I will show you the difference between the default standard default camera app from Sony and the Google camera with its artificial processing and uh, yeah, heavily image editing. So let's get started. So what you can see here right now is the recording with the Google camera port or mod for the Xperia 1 Mark II that also works on the 5 Mark II and supposedly also on the 1 Mark III and 5 Mark III. I don't have those devices here, the threes, so I cannot test this out on the threes, but on the twos it's working fine. As you can see here, I think stabilization is working fine. You can use the default lens on the, the main camera lens on the Xperia 1 Mark II and I think the quality should be okay and there should be no issues with this when it comes to this. I'm walking here normal speed that I usually walk, walk in when I'm doing my vlog and audio is also recording via this little microphone here. So this should work fine and I hope that uh, the quality is okay and we don't have much sun out but you can get a bit of HDR effect as well when you holding it against brighter subjects or backgrounds. So yeah this is the test with the Google camera in video mode and I will show you now some uh, comparisons uh, in regards to photos. Here are the photos on the left the, the one with the Google cam on on the right the one with the photo pro app so let's open it up, put this on the left, let's open this up, put this on the right and now we have them side by side. So what we can see here is on the left that the uh, Gcam photo is slightly has different colors and on the right it has some slightly boosted colors on the Photo Pro app with the basic mode. When we go in we can see also that I think the colors are more accurate on the Sony in comparison to the Google cam. But we can see a little bit maybe also more details in the grass that is a bit like we are going into greenish kind of not so much uh, detection of the stuff. But in general, the warmer color of the Sony is more pleasing to the eye and I think more realistic also to what I saw with my naked eye. When it comes to high dynamic range, both are overexposing the sky a bit. And uh, when we take a look here, so nothing much, but I think slightly bit, slightly bit more exposed on the Sony than on the Google cam. Let's take a look at the next photo where we can see it more clearly. The Google cam is overexposing the sky and the Sony um, Photo Pro app has HDR enabled and you can see clearly the clouds in the background and the lifted shadows which is like more contrasty on the Google cam. So I'm not sure what is wrong with the Google cam, maybe because it's a Google cam mod 
maybe it doesn't have HDR at all, I'm not sure. But uh, in terms of sharpness, there's nothing much uh, that you can tell apart here from those two. They're both pretty, pretty sharp. There's not much of a difference in terms of processing here. Maybe slightly a bit uh, brighter on the Sony, but it could be due to the HDR effect here as well. So in terms of details, I think the mm, Sony wins. We take a look at the bottom here. Yeah, maybe slightly a bit sharper and more sharpening applied to the Google Cam, as you can see here. You can see a little bit more details on this little uh, lamp post. And here it's uh, getting a bit mushy and, and creamy already. So this is the difference here. Let's go to the next photo where we can see also again the HDR effect on the Photo Pro app. And uh, the Google Cam doesn't have the HDR effect. When we take a look at the details here, we can see in the background people playing and uh, the focus is um, both right but what we can see here again is that you have more dynamic range on the Sony app than on the Google Cam which is surprising for me I have to say and I also checked the uh, camera on uh, the, uh, the Google Cam to check if HDR if there's an HDR option or something like this I didn't find anything now this little test here where I have to say both overexposed the background the Google cam and the uh, Sony cam and I don't see this is the portrait mode uh, with the back facing camera and this is the bokeh mode on the Sony with the back facing camera and even like in terms of details hair details and so on I don't see much of a difference here I have to say both did a great job my face might be a bit softer on the Sony uh, but it's like almost indistinguishable from each other so both did a great job let's go back here uh, to this photo now and what we can see here is now a very interesting thing I think somehow the HDR effect kicked in a little bit on the Google cam because we can see yeah, the clouds are here it's still a bit overexposed still a bit brighter but in general it is brighter than on the Sony uh, photo pro app so we can see the the little flowers here on the ground and here uh, a bit more contrast a bit more shadow here a bit raised shadows in general also the tree here a bit darker than on the Google cam so the Google cam uh, created a brighter image um, in this case in terms of processing and details let's see I don't see much of a difference again it's basically the same then the next one a puddle I had to photograph the puddle as well and here we can see also almost indistinguishable from each other uh, taken just a few seconds uh, one after another and both uh, overexposing the sky a lot as you can see here I don't see much of a difference maybe a little bit finer details on the Google cam and it's getting a bit mushy on the photo pro but this is pretty much everything uh, what does the uh, what does the details say here in terms of what they did so the exposure time is 1 over 1000 and 1 over 1000 as well 12.2 uh, megapixels is clear and uh, yeah the ISO is 58 and here it's 64 so there's a slight advantage on the Google Cam in this case, but I'm not sure if it's writing the correct values down. So in terms of file size, this would be also interesting to just uh, see how big is this 4.1 megabytes and this one is 6.6 .6 megabytes. So the Photo Pro app has uh, the bigger JPEG files that could be then could mean also more details or yeah, less compression let's check the next one which is a close-up shot of this little flower and what you can see here is also pretty nice and interesting difference here all taken with the main cam we can see warmer colors more yellowish colors on the uh, google cam but we see like a very strange bokeh with yeah this harsh uh, kind of light 
Um, good sharpness on the flower. Let's take a look at the Photo Pro one. More natural colors, definitely, because this is what the color was of the of the grass and of the flower itself. So less um, processed background. You can see the book is also not not perfect, but here it looks a lot more processed, and here a lot more eye pleasing. I have to say, in terms of details. Yeah, the focus was slightly different, I would say. The focus more here and here it was more into the front, which is slightly out of focus here. So, yeah, I think also there's sharpening applied on the G-Cam a little bit more. And uh, this might change the effect a bit as well. Um, but in general, I think both pretty good. You can write me in the comment section which one of those photos you like better. And then when it comes to yeah, HDR again, I think the Sony Photo Pro app did a better job than the G-Cam. Um, again, the clouds, it was, was a little bit cloudy, some dark clouds going, passing by, but here it's uh, yeah, overexposed simply, and here the Sony Photo Pro app did a better job. So I'm very surprised that the HDR is better on the Photo Pro app than on the G-Cam, but it could be down to the mod not having proper G-Cam. Then, interestingly enough, here the Sony did yeah, a sloppy job, I would say, in terms of colors, because this grass is basically the same grass that we had before that was more like this grass that we have now on the G-Cam. So I'm not sure what it was exposing to, but the, the, the it's too cool. The grass is too cool. The whole picture is too cool. Uh, people playing football in the background. Uh, HDR, again, I think a little, little bit better on the Photo Pro and the Gcam shows a little bit of less detail when I zoom in. You can see here slightly blurrier. Uh, so it could be that it was focusing on something else. Not sure, but I think I have more details uh, on the Sony uh, than the Gcam. But in general, the more warmer tone now on the Gcam. So it's interesting, I would say. Now let's take a shot with the zoom lens at uh, roughly the same distance. And uh, I zoomed in a bit digitally on both. And what we can see here, the Sony has heavy sharpening applied so that it does look good in this little view. If I go in here, you can see uh, heavy sharpening applied. It's not so great. And the uh, G-Cam is even worse, as you can see here. This is basically unusable. I would say. So it's very soft also in this little view. Uh, then another shot again where I would say this time the G-Cam did a bit, little bit better with the exposure uh, HDR effect and also the color is um, correct. It's a bit more bright on the Sony. In general the, the details are clear. You can see more contrasty on the G-Cam again. And um, yeah, the exposure was a bit warmer on the G on the on the Sony cam in comparison to the G cam again. Again, the Sony cam has the more accurate colors, and the G cam is a bit too cool in this case. So back to the usual <laughs> photos, and the same uh, goes here. But again, you can see that the Sony has a bit cooler color of the grass, and here the G cam warmer color. So whenever there's a lot of clouds in there, it seems to be that. The Sony is toning it down into the cooler direction a little bit. I bet you have overexposed clouds on the G-Cam. Uh, in terms of colors, this is the more accurate color, I would say. This is too punchy, the red here, um, the red jackets of those. But both are not correct, because it's a mixture of both. It's a bit toned down here and a bit like too, uh, yeah, going to, to, to this uh, pinkish kind of color. It was actually red, not as red as here, but not as pinkish as here. So both not pretty good when it comes to this. And then another shot here where you can see the HDR effect again on the Photo Pro working much better than uh, the uh, G-Cam. And we can see it here again as well. And now the warmer color of the, of the green grass here and the cooler on the G-Cam. So also wide angle shot was also there so uh, yeah this is basically everything uh, starting from the beginning again in terms of uh, daylight shots now i'm using the photo pro app in basic mode 
from the one mark free for video recording and this is what you get in terms of quality this is what you get in terms of stability and in terms of hdr hdr effect is turned off so it's not recording in hlg to make it fair and square with the google camera to have a nice little comparison when it comes to the standard dynamic range that both have to offer by default and of course i have always the option to turn on hdr and then you get a little bit better exposure and uh, bluer skies probably as well and if i turn around probably the sky is now blown out but this is something that i observed that happens also on the google camera but we can take a look at the google camera right now so and this is now the google camera with the active stabilization which is one of the best stabilizations that the google camera has to offer and you can tell me if it is good is it any good is it better than the default sony camera app and uh, the photo pro in basic mode that I've used here on the Xperia 1 Mark II. So you can tell me this in the comment section. And uh, yeah, how's the quality of this video uh, for vlogging? I think it is pretty okay. We have some other features. What did not work and does not work on the Google camera app so far is the super wide angle camera. You, can, you cannot use it for vlogging. For taking photos, you can use it, but not for videos because the camera app just crashes. But uh, I think what is interesting is that in terms of HDR, the Google camera doesn't seem to kick in so often as the um, Photo Pro app from the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III does, which gives you a bit of better HDR effect than the Google camera application. Mm, pretty interesting. But how about low light? And I think in low light, the Google camera application beats the Photo Pro app in basic mode. So let's take a look at that. Coming to the nighttime shots on the left, the G Cam on the right, the Sony Photo Pro app, we don't see much of a difference yet. And I would say in this shot where there's a little bit light still in the background, the Sony did a better job where the G Cam got a brighter picture. It's not so good in terms of quality. And when we go to the next photo, we can see the big difference that the G Cam does. In even less light, you can get a lot better photos with a lot nicer exposure. You can even read some titles here in the background, even if it's not perfect. It is a lot brighter photo. So the nighttime computation where you can make uh, from a night the day is definitely with the G-Cam and with the Sony Photo Pro app. No, it's not doing this clearly. We can see some of the tangerines here, but still um, here basically nothing. And here we can see a photo. So when it comes to nighttime, the G-Cam is really creating from night a day and this is i think yeah one of the good things here also here another sh test shot that i did uh, where in total darkness and it can pull out stuff what the sony photo pro app simply cannot and uh, yeah this is my conclusion when it comes to nighttime photo shots this is now the recording in photo pro app with hdr enabled and this is what you can expect in terms of high dynamic range in video mode on the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II, uh, 5 Mark II, uh, 1 Mark III and uh, 5 Mark III pretty much. Maybe the 5 Mark III and 1 Mark III have a slightly bit better dynamic range because of the sensor slightly more updated and the chip and ISP more updated. But this is in general what you can expect from those devices with the default Sony application uh, when it comes to HDR recording this is what you can get with cinema pro on the xperia 1 mark 2 and uh, the free and probably the 5 mark 2 and free as well and uh, cinema pro for vlogging is a bit yeah meh because auto exposure is not working i hope my face is exposed uh, correctly here right now because we don't have uh, ch changing uh, conditions here right now but this is what you can get in terms of stability and also i crop in a bit because it's 16 by 9 what i usually use and cinema pro records in 21 by 9 but uh, this is what you can expect in terms of cinema pro app on the xperia devices so what do you think about the google camera app running on the xperia 1 mark 2 the 5 mark 2 and the 1 mark 3 and uh, 5 mark 3 you can write it down in the comment section and uh, you find also the download link for the particular app that I'm using right now. It's a mod version and APK. It's not working 100% in all modes, but for most of the stuff, I think it's working fine, especially the night mode is impressive. 
when it comes to the normal camera app yeah it has slightly different colors here and there sometimes but i was a bit disappointed by it about hdr because i think the sony app did a better job when it comes to hdr and uh, yeah this is yeah the big difference in terms of uh, google camera app that might be not 100 percent optimized for the xperias but um, yeah in general it's good to have especially for night mode so write down in the comment section what you think about this and uh, you will find in the description also the link to the app itself and uh, that's everything for this video hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching until the next time bye